Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Friday, May 1st, 2020. All right, let's check out our solar wind speeds coming in at 279.8 kilometers per second. That's right. Our solar wind speeds coming in at 279.8 kilometers per second. Now, I have had this channel since uh, 2017 and I can tell you that I've only witnessed solar wind speeds uh, around the 269 uh, kilometers per second that that's the lowest I've ever seen it uh, so that's from 2017 until current present day uh, I report on the solar wind speed daily and obviously check it whether I'm on the air or not. Uh, so again, we will have to continue to watch this. Uh, right now it's at 279.8. I will take a look at it here as well. Um, here just a little bit. We'll refresh it before the show is over because before I started uh, prep work for today, we had solar wind speeds in the 280s, so it was dropping. But nonetheless, we have a density of 4.3, and yeah, again, we have sunspots. And I'll take us on over to the spaceweather.com here just in a second, but uh, TCI went down from 3.51 to 3.36. Our KP indices are sitting at a one with a 24 hour max. And right now we are looking at a coronal hole, a earth facing coronal hole um, that should have an impact on earth's magnetic field sometime around May 4th. So uh, right now the size of this particular coronal hole, nothing major but we could see some increased solar wind speeds somewhere around the low 500 kilometers per second. But this is earth facing almost directly. So we will expect to feel the effects from this on May 4th. And let's go over to spaceweather.com. I wanted to talk about the three sunspots that we have right now. Uh, we have, oh, that's not going to work, so let me just take it back here. Uh, we've got AR2760. We have AR2762. And we have AR2763. Um, we're looking at three sunspots, two in the solar cycle 25 that are um, that are from that cycle, two from the solar cycle 25, and then of course 2760 is a member of solar cycle 24. Sunspot number 35 as well, and again, for three sunspots, guys, these are pretty small. Um, to only have a sunspot number of 35 uh, for three different labeled groupings, so... But I wanted to point this out because even spaceweather.com talks about it a little bit here. And they're saying solar cycle 25 is intensifying, but don't get too excited. Solar minimum is still underway. However, new solar cycle 25 is showing signs of life. There are currently two new cycle sunspots, AR2762 and AR2763. So far in 2020, 78% of all sunspots have come from uh, solar cycle 25, a sharp increase from only 17% from 2019, and of course, 0% from solar cycle uh, 25 in 2018. So folks, uh, solar cycle 25 is ramping up. We're still in a minimum, and I, I can prove that as well over here at thegrandsolarminimum.com. And I wanna focus on, this is the panoramic view and I'll go ahead and get out the arrow and show you what's what. So <clears throat> at the zero right here is Earth facing. That's directly 
with my tip of my arrow and moving back to about here is the eastern limb all right so from here to here is incoming and then back here is near the opposite side of earth facing currently so we got this we can't get this area the black at stereo b so really after the sunspots that we're looking at right now the three that we have they're very small as well after that we will be spotless now the last two times that we've uh, witnessed a streak of how many days we've gone spotless it's not been much more than between 15 and 20 days without sunspots so interesting that we are starting to see a little bit more activity with uh sunspots slight and will we see an intensity in solar wind speeds when we get coronal holes uh, will we see that starting anytime soon not likely based on what we're looking at right now i'd say we we still have plenty of time for minimum conditions as you will see these flare-ups from time to time taking a look at kp and sees we have a little blip here it's been pretty quiet lately too so Definitely watching out. We've had a lot of seismic activity, a lot of volcanic activity over the past several weeks. Uh, definitely things have picked up. Definitely interesting. And this is quite the um, orbit pattern right now. My goodness. Uh, we've had some amazing mornings, sunrises, where we've seen Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, all in the same sky lined up. Uh, what a sight. Uh, with the moon as well. So um, interesting times we are alive for, folks. That's all I got to say. All right, let's take a look over at Roy Spencer, Dr. Roy Spencer.com, I should say. Well, we have another drop in the temps. And I'm here to show you the truth, if I can zoom this in a little bit. So here we are. Actually, this never works out. Let's just back out. Sorry about that. Sorry about the smaller screen, folks. But last month, we came in at 0.48 uh, above baseline. Uh, also, this month, we drop, and it's at 0.38 degrees Celsius above baseline. Now, this is the second largest temperature drop in a two-month period in satellite history. So once again, this is the second largest temperature drop in satellite history in a two-month period. And it's also fair to point out that CO2 levels are still hovering at the 414 parts per million. So the, the temperatures are continuing to drop over the last two months. We saw a, a early peak. And then we see the temperatures drop once again here in the last two months. Now, you would say we're heading into May and June, July. Surely this is going to bounce back. Maybe, maybe not. A uh, good friend of ours here at the Grand Solar Minimum Channel, uh, Scott Rose in Michigan, had a little conversation with him, and he brought up some really good points in some of this temperature data. And the one that he pointed out the most was the Arctic temperatures. Uh, last month, they were at negative 0.72 in the Arctic. For April, they came in at 1.03. Now, the other notable temperatures were also the United States, where last month the U.S. had a temperature of plus 1.09, and this month it's dropped minus 0.59, or I'm sorry, it dropped to minus 5.9. So there's temperature swings. The south got colder, the north got warmer. And Scott informed me that this has everything to do with the jet stream flow 
And this, and after talking to him about this, I also found uh, this article here. Interesting enough that we are looking at colder temperatures, colder temperatures in the Great Lakes, the Northeast, and, you know, it looks like it's going to be below average for Ohio as well. Interesting temperature contrast. Sorry, the dogs are out here growling. Anyway, <clears throat> but we have cooler temperatures here in the south, much below uh, cooler temperatures as well. I mean, below average, slightly below average in Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina. And then you talk about Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi being near or slightly above average. So nothing really spectacular there. Now, what's really crazy and impressive is that we're going to, the Southwest is going to roast. If you live in Southern California, Phoenix, Nevada, you're going to roast according to this May temperature outlook. But the Northwest stays about average, a little bit above average, according to this. The Central Plains stays near average. Then you get in the, the Northern Plains states like North Dakota, Minnesota, parts of Iowa, below average or much below average. If you live in Michigan, in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Northeast Ohio, New York, and all of New England is going to be much below average. And then Traverse City, Interlock in Michigan, you guys are going to be most below average. What is that for May? So last month, um, talked to several people about temperatures. Uh, David Birch, uh, star man, very informative person as well. And also uh, mentioning Scott again, as he has always kind of talked to me about the 3.6 year cycle. And, and, you know, even when we had the peak at 0.77, it was um, his information and knowledge about this. And that made me realize that this is a blip. As, you know, I remember the day we saw the 0.77 temperature on the UAH. I reached out to several of my uh, resources and friends and said, what's going on here? The temperature rose and rose and kept going up and 0.77. What's, what's going on? Uh, we haven't had temperatures this high since 2016 in February, which was also after an El Nino. Okay, all right. And Scott... Um, Pretty much called it, too. We saw temperature decline in March and April, and they are the two, uh, the second lowest or second largest drop in satellite history. And he told me this, too, when we were looking at 0.77. We'll, we'll see a temperature drop. And I went back and looked at history and looked at the last El Nino, and I looked what happened after we peaked at 0.86 above baseline and then we dropped big time from there and almost uniformly right now we're doing the same thing um so more information will be in on this but just interesting to note that our global warmest friends who told us that snow was not going to be possible for her right now and our children children will never see snow the, North, the Northern Hemisphere snow mass broke records again this year. We were well above average for most, if not all, year long in some place. Um, and, and, and also, let's not only are we talking about how conditions are returning to normal in the 3-4 region, El Nino, now turning to La Nina, we're also expecting that. 